We just put out the Houthi joke that I've been doing. A lot of people enjoyed it, and then other people are like, well, actually, the Houthis are attacking the cargo ships because of the injustice in Gaza, and, the, and then the United States is fighting that. I'm like, yeah, probably, but that's not funny. <laughs> like, Don't forget, I just said, Houthi sounds weird. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There was nothing, nothing behind that guy. Are you really coming after me? Yeah, dude. <laughs> Trekking heavier, traveling light. There's one thing that's right wherever I go. That's where I am. Glad I had that hash brown bite just to pack everything in there. Chia pudding sounds like poop. <laughs> yeah, chia, chia pudding. That was invented to help monks take a dump in the, uh, wherever, you know, the monasteries. Uh, are we recording? We're going. Well, we're keeping that part in. Did you know that? Chia pudding is made for the monks in the monasteries. Anyway, uh, welcome to the show. This is my podcast, This Week in Zoltan, as you can see on the screen. If you're listening in audio world, I pointed at a TV screen over my shoulder. Did you know that we're high tech now? Did you know any of those things? Anyway, uh, welcome to the podcast. It's me. It's This Week in Zoltan. We are brought to you uh, once again by the one and only Safe Journal. This is the best journal on the planet, are you journaling in another journal? You're journaling wrong. I, I, I'd like to say that journaling is like art, like it's subjective. It isn't though. It's a real practical pen to paper process. And if you are journaling in another book that doesn't say safe journal on the outside, isn't green felt, you are doing it wrong. You might as well just be yelling your thoughts into a crowded subway while everyone is nervously checking their phone. All right, the Safe Journal is the number one journal out there, and you can get 25% off. I said 25% off if you type in Zoltan at checkout, and uh, I send you a personalized note, which I've been getting real willy-nilly with. I had one uh, for a Jonathan Carson this morning, and I just kept writing, I will not call you Johnny Carson. I will not call you Johnny Carson. I will not call you Johnny Carson. And then I finally wrote, oh, I'm so sorry. I thought that was my inner model. I had a great time with the notes is what I'm saying. I have a good time. There was one lady that lives on Fart Drive. No, Donkey Lane. <laughs> there was, How did you confuse those two? I, I, just, I just remember the, the street name was dumb. Uh, someone lived on Donkey Lane and another one lived on Maple Syrup Avenue. Like these, the, I, I love these orders because I get to hear make believe addresses uh, that where I'm like, there's no way this is getting to where it's going. But the Postal <laughs> Service will take it there. Safe Journal. SafeJournal.co. CO, not dot com, because we live in a capitalist society that is separating the classes better than ever. SafeJournal.co is what we could afford. <laughs> uh, go there and get the best journal on the market. On the market? On the market. On the market. What's up, everybody? We got uh, Emma on the ones. No, Mike on the ones and twos. Here he Emma, is. Emma is uh, off camera, is staring at me with loving brown eyes. Loving brown judgy eyes. Judgy. I didn't <laughs> add judgy. You added judgy. I didn't do that at all. How are How are you? Pretty good. Pretty good, Mike. You doing all right? Doing great. You had a, you had a wild morning of technical difficulties. It's still a problem. I'm looking at it right now on my screen. And it's oh, still it's trying still... to download. And it's going no thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it was something that I can control, but it's not. You know, you like. I, I mean this with love, but like looking at you, you don't look like you should be able to work any of the things you're working on. Is this because because I you think I'm just gonna punch the keyboard yeah. <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> you don't look like the stereotypical uh like computer genius but you know what you're doing over there i'm not a genius by any stretch i just uh i don't know trial and error all that stuff that you have all the screens all the keyboards all that stuff cameras microphones what have you and a baby fan i think the only one i could work is the baby fan I couldn't do any of what you do back there. I also have nicotine pouches. Hey, you know, I know how to work these. <laughs> that, that's just that's just to keep you rocking, man. I uh, nothing like a nothing like a nicotine pouch and a black coffee to really get the day going. Speaking of <laughs> speaking of fart lane, hello, we're having fun. That's a that's a 1970s breakfast right there. A coffee, <laughs> really two donuts, is. and a cigarette. Hey, Nolan Ryan, how'd you do it? Well, <laughs> my speed came from various places. A good old 1970s breakfast. A little nicotine, a little sugar, and a butt ton of caffeine. I, uh, I, I do that, though. Like, with the fact, like, you ever do that where you just judge somebody and they're like, they can't do the thing they're doing? 
You ever do that? Like that one guy, uh, someone told me, I don't trust buff guys to give me information that isn't about exercise or diet. Like like that John Huber guy, he is like some big oaf that has a podcast and my friend's like, he's a neuroscientist. And I, for some reason, I got a clip of his podcast on my YouTube algorithm and I'm like, I don't trust anything that guy says. And he might be a neuroscientist. He might actually be that. Maybe he he's a master. Maybe he's the smartest man on the planet. But if you have time to like lift weights and be jacked, I just I just feel like if you give me advice on anything other than diet and exercise, I gotta go fact check that because I don't believe it. You know, it comes off like ivermectin to me. Do you have that? Hmm, maybe sometimes, yeah. Like, do you ever have that? Like, like let's say you took your iPhone. I don't know. What's I don't know. What's like something let's say you had a massive IT issue and you took your laptop into a thing and the guy had to put down a kettlebell to start working on your computer. Would you just be like, "Well, this isn't going to work at all." It's kind of like uh our accountant. Yes, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> he has a lot of protein shakes and stuff in his office, but he's a good accountant. He's a great accountant. He's really good. I think if you're jacked, you have to lead every com every introduction with I am an accountant. I'm a CPA. I'm a certified whatever. <laughs> you have to do that. Just like if you're a skinny guy that's yeah. like is strong, you got to be like just you know, I am actually strong. <laughs> yes, I am actually. Strong. There's a guy Anatoly. Have you ever seen this guy? You should look him up. It's so fun. He's like a he's a an elite power lifter. Okay, but he's not stacked. Like he's very good at like the mechanics and science of lifting. Oh, he's you, we talked about this. Did he's we? the guy who dresses up yeah, and like then a, like pranks yeah. heavy yeah, lifters. Yeah, yeah. Yes, it's yes, like yes, that. Yes. But you got to do that the other way. If you're jacked, uh, you got to be like, I have a brain. <laughs> you know who has to do that now is modern professional wrestlers because most professional wrestlers are like my size now, and they just look like little. Uh, what what are those like those guys that climb ropes and stuff? Gym or, teachers? <laughs> I don't know. The, uh, the, the stupid workout where you flip tires and throw sledgehammer. Oh, CrossFit. Yeah, that CrossFit. They just look like little CrossFit guys. And then they probably have to introduce themselves. Like, I am a professional wrestler. They pull out their luchador mask. Because, you know, <laughs> I do wear this professionally. <laughs> Let me open my championship belt case here at the airport. But, like, they, none of them, they don't look like the wrestlers that we grew up with, the Giants, you know? These are these are the little fellas. I guess everyone. I guess that's a good thing. We're breaking down the walls of what used to be and what is now. You know, like I went to Best Buy over the weekend, and I don't know if you've been to a Best Buy recently. Terrifying. You walk in. Try to avoid them. Yeah, you walk in. There's a guy with a bulletproof vest, dressed like he's going to go fight the Houthis in Yemen, and then they, they everyone's on a walkie-talkie, like we got a guy coming to the Apple Watches, and then it's like what? it's everything so. And now I feel more comfortable buying things online, which, if you remember 20 years ago, it was flipped. Buying something online 20 years ago, you're like, I'll be shocked if I get this package. I'll be shocked if I don't have to cancel my debit card and because they definitely stole my identity. Well, you know what's funny? Speaking of Best Buy, so I bought this new little camera yeah. that I'm going to start using for stuff. Can't get it anywhere. This is like the hottest camera on the market. It looks like a taser. It's Well, it's that too. Yeah, yeah. So that way, if you're filming somebody and they get too close, you can yap them. <laughs> Well, you can't get literally anywhere sold out. The only place you can buy it is Best Buy because I don't think people know that Best Buy exists anymore. I mean, it, it it's like a, it's like a hack it. to go into Best Buy now because they nobody goes in there. It's it's like it's the last time I was in Best Buy, I went to buy that because someone was like, "No, you can get it there." Because people forgot Best Buy exists. People forget about Best yeah. Buy, but the reason I want to go to Best Buy is because I want to buy something. A lot of times when I'm on the road, I needed to record my comedy, and I'd rather get it on Amazon and ship to the house. But I don't like it sitting outside in Brooklyn, waiting for someone to come by and nap it, which we haven't have, had anyone like steal, but I was like, let me just go to Best Buy and get it directly. But then as I'm in Best Buy, I'm like, I feel like I'll get robbed here. Mm -hmm. I feel like like when you buy something and then they send you, like I bought a, I had to get a new Apple Watch because my last one took a dump. And then you pay for it in the Apple Watch department. And then he's like, oh, you're good to go. Here's your receipt. I'll give you, I'll call and let them know you're coming. And I'm like, what does that mean? Like, if you don't call and let them know I'm coming, I'm going to be tackled by the guy with the military outfit. Like, that's My buddy insane. used to be security at Best Buy years ago. Well, are he, they trained to shoot on sight? They're like trained to do nothing. <laughs> Literally, he's like, we're there be to make people believe they can't get away with it. They go, if wow. they walk out the door, it's theirs. Like, wow. And we take no, unless it's like a recurring thing by the same person. It's like, hey, man, have fun. Wow. That's yeah. crazy. Because honestly, where I feel unsafe is the parking lot. 
Like, cause in the store it's kind of unsafe, but then I get to the door and I, now I have my receipt of the exact value of what's in my bag. And now I got to haul ass to my rental car and hope that a roving gang of teenagers don't come up yeah. and just hit me in the, hit me in the side dome. I hope they don't come and make fun of me. Yeah. That's teenagers that. are brutal. <laughs> <laughs> Teenagers scared the hell out of me. I hate I hate being on the train at three o'clock in New York City because that's when they just start taking over. Yeah, it's the worst. And I want to I want to hit them, but you can't. <laughs> you can't hit them, but they're of of size. Like and most of these teenagers are bigger than me, <laughs> but they but you can tell they haven't filled out yet. So yeah. I'm like I think I could I think with my old man strength overpowers their testosterone level even at 16 and i feel like i could lean on them and give them a couple you know like rick flair punches where you put them in a headlock and go bop, 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 bop. you know give them a couple knuckles to the eyes i know. feel like though it is nice to hear that the new gen like younger generations aren't all woke like the media wants to tell us because if you hear a 13 year old's conversation on the train good lord they are not skimming on any of the words no. that we're not supposed to say let me tell you the r word is back they're all back buddy the, uh calling everything gay is back that's yeah, i remember we were walking once and i saw a couple teenagers and they were just throwing all the words around and i'm like how do they know those words? <laughs> You're so sweet. <laughs> You're so sweet. You grew up in a nice family. That's what I like. I like, uh, I grew up watching rated R movies. Uh -huh. So I got in trouble a lot at school saying bad words at school that I didn't know were bad words. Like, sl not slurs, but like saying Jesus Christ, the Lord's name in vain. I didn't know that was like a bad thing. So one time my friend punched me and Dean punched me in the arm mm -hmm. and I went, Jesus Christ. And my math teacher was like, what? Look, let me talk to you. And she goes, what would your mother say if I called her right now and said, you're yelling that in the middle of school. And I, I was honest with her. I'm like, I don't know if my mom thinks that's a bad phrase because I my mom's going to pick up. <laughs> yeah. She's on the third shift of the day. Like, what? <laughs> I, I think she has time for this. <laughs> I said that more than once too. I go, she's at work. Like, I don't know. I would tell her that one time I got a referral and I got sent to the principal's office. Like, we're calling your mother, and I'm like, oh, that's not the current job she's at. I'm like, which job? <laughs> and they're like, damn it. And they're like, which job is she at? I'm like, well, I don't know. You know, I mean, it depends what time of the day it is, what day of the week it is. She works really hard. You might have to just write down what I did wrong, and I'll take it to her. We're calling your dad. Oh, cool. Can you tell him I said hi? <laughs> <laughs> and also, let me know what his number is. <laughs> this is getting insane, dude. What's your long distance package? Because he lives in Budapest, Hungary. So we're calling your dad. Uh, well, don't write him a letter because that ain't a way to get a hold of him. I'd tell you that first, Dan, bud. If you get a hold of him, you better call my mom because she's got a few words for that guy. Call the call the IRS too. Guy owes us some cash. That must be so hard for uh, school administrators to deal with kids that like we're gonna call your parents and like good luck getting a hold of them. And you're like, ah, what am I supposed to do to threaten this child? Because, like, for school administrators, calling your parents is, like, what your mom used to do about, like, I'm going to tell your dad when he gets home. But now you don't have that option, and they can't hit you. And the worst they can do is make you stay after school, which you're like, great, I was going to be unsupervised anyway. I get to I get to stay in the, in the warmth of a school? <laughs> Wonderful. All your punishments sound like praise. Like, that's that's how it comes off. But, uh... But yeah, yeah, Best Buy, Best Buys are terrifying now. Mm -hmm. And it's not just the teenagers. It's the people that work there look like they don't know anything. Like, remember when we bought that camera mm -hmm. at Best Buy? They're like, let me bring our camera expert over. And he was just another guy in the same shirt. Mm -hmm. Like, it was just another pasty kid with bad teeth. Mm -hmm. And he's like, no, I'm the camera expert. And you're like, you could have fooled all of us like that guy and like as he was holding it he's like oh yeah that's the button like, like he, was, he was he was learning it while he was holding it i'm like i have a feeling you and i should just both watch this youtube tutorial video together this is this is canon's top notch this is sony yeah sony <laughs> yeah. It's the sony canon they merged yeah they merged there's well, you an would anti -trust job <laughs> The guy who invented this is now working at Sony, so it's kind of the same thing. That's what I meant by it. It's, uh, I don't know. I, um, where was I? This past weekend, I was in Jacksonville, Florida, performing at I'm the... I'm sorry. That's what people say. I mean, you know what? I'm starting to like Florida. Well, it, well yeah, that makes sense. Why? Because you're a hillbilly. Because you're... <laughs>
I mean, it's, it's per- makes perfect sense. It would be weird if you didn't like it. If you were like Florida, yeah. <laughs> like, uh, this guy's been lying about his background. <laughs> you know what I like about Florida? It's trailer park people living in houses with foundations. It's, <laughs> like, it's trailer park people that still don't have basements. <laughs> yes, it's it's trailer park people that live middle class lifestyles, but like it's like rich people will be low class individuals, and I like I don't know I kind of like it. It makes it welcoming like i uh there's something about it where i don't want to live there but every time i visit like we get all the way comfortable Mm -hmm. like we feel really good about ourselves and we feel unjudged by everybody else Mm -hmm. you know there's just a lot of guys wearing under armor and salt life t-shirts and uh and just everyone looks like they they're about to go fishing but they never do no one ever goes (laughs) fishing but everyone looks like they're like dressed in case their buddy's like I'm on the loading dock. Get out here. And then they just flip flop out there. I like, I don't know. I li- Florida is kind of like California without all the attractive people. <laughs> not the, I mean, there's attractive people in the southern parts, but like not so much in the rest of it. Florida, ugly California. <laughs> ugly California. <laughs> That's a good tagline. And I mean that with all love. Like, uh, people are nice and it, it just doesn't come off pretentious. Florida, we're not as pretty as California, but we have alligators. <laughs> we, <laughs> what? <laughs> we saw that video on, on Instagram this morning. There was a, uh, there was some people tubing and there's, and I guess they were doing this in an area with alligators and they were tubing down a river with alligators. I guess that's a swamp. They're doing some swamp tubing and there's just Could an, also be a pool in someone's backyard. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're everywhere, yeah, these alligators. 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 Everywhere in Florida. But they, uh, there's a chubby gal in an inflatable, which is already funny. But then there's an alligator just beelining to her and everyone's screaming at her and she doesn't, she's like this, so she can't see in any, she's like, what, where? And all she can do to defend herself is slap her feet up and down <laughs> like that's gonna do by it. the way this is how i woke up this morning <laughs> to him pithering in bed it's true it was so annoying <laughs> I, hey, listen if you're not gonna wake up before me i'm gonna be on instagram i'm gonna be watching some videos and you're gonna wake up to me going <laughs> and that's how you're gonna wake up and then i'm gonna show you go look at that that's the best way to start your day do you want me to read you an article of Alexis Navalny, or do you want me to show you a chubby gal in Florida being chased by a gator? Like, I think that's a good way to wake up. If you say so. I don't know. I think it might be. I, uh, but yeah, Florida's, Florida's kind of growing on me to visit. Like, we're going again this week to Port Charlotte. Oh, I'm and going to Florida this weekend. Where are you going? Orlando. Are you performing or? Yes. Where? We're going to Chicago, then Orlando Sunday? Saturday. Where are you performing in Orlando? Um, but a couple shows. Okay. Milk, milk something, another something, <laughs> conference. Clearly, you don't want to promote these shows. So no, you don't I do. To. <laughs> Mil- I don't know. I don't know what they are. Okay. They just got sent to me, and I can't remember. Milk District something, Saturday at 10 p.m. That's awesome. Yeah, I've- that's... That's all you get to know. That's all you get no to idea. know. Listen, if you want to see Mike perform, you do the work. All right? You, <laughs> you put in the legwork. I think it's called Milk District Comedy. Okay. In Orlando this Saturday at 10 p.m. Be there. Yeah, it sounds Well, actually, right. by the time this comes out, it will already have happened. It was me. awesome. It was awesome. I love Florida. <laughs> My buddy is shaggy at Universal Studios. And he's uh, hooking me up with a ticket, too. I'm very excited. It's going to be a big weekend in Florida for me. It's great. I used to have to fly into that Orlando airport a lot because I worked cruise ships. And so they'd fly me in there, and then I'd have to take a bus to Cape Canaveral or wherever they would. Port Canaveral. That's where they shipped you out of. But I hated that airport in Orlando because it was all all the worst parts of Disneyland at the airport. So it's families with kids, and they're screaming and crying, but there's no ride. There's no ride they're about to go on. There's no rail. Yeah, yeah. There's no hot dog cart. So it's just the misery Mm -hmm. of of them leaving. And like I always, man, I had, I read a story once, which this is dark. I'll just let you know this now. But there was a TSA agent that killed themselves at the Orlando airport by jumping off the balcony right in front of the TSA checkpoint and just face planting, which is horrible. Like it's really sad. But the amount of times I was miserable in that TSA line because there were so many giddy, annoying families. Just, nyah, nyah, nyah. remember when Goofy, ah, 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 
oh, where's your stuff? And then just imagine squat and then everyone <laughs> crying and sad. Like just the imagery of that. I'm like, good, good. That's a way to go. Imagine coming into Orlando and the first thing you see is that. And then you're like, you're like, time to go to Epcot. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. You excited to eat dinner with Mickey? I'm not excited to eat anything. You just saw the circle of life. Let's go watch the Lion King play. I, it's, a bug's life. A bug's. Nope. 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 And that's horrible. Like, I, I'm, I, once again, I know this is dark. Suicide. Listen, get help. Have a safe journal. Write down your thoughts. And if you're having any issues, please seek all the help. But for the people that have already done it, if you did it in a creative way like that, you know, it made me giggle. Who are you talking to? I don't know who I'm talking to. <laughs> Sometimes the I, afterlife. I think, I think I'm talking. To <laughs> if you have done it to yourself, well done. <laughs> what? I just, because that airport annoys me to no end, and I used to have to spend so many hours at it, that I was just putting myself in this TSA person's shoes, where they would spend eight hours at this airport every day, and have to deal with families that were, like, taking shoes off of toddlers, and putting them into things, and then old people, they got a lift out of the thing, and wand them down, and then plop them down, and wheel them off, and then angry parents, and juice boxes, and I just, I picture that person snapping going enough of this enough of my boss i'm about to ruin everybody's day and then he goes and does it and i know it's real life so it's not comedy but if you saw that in a movie you'd be like kudos kudos <laughs> like that's that's I, I how many times do i say that where i'm like i know that's horrible but if you saw that in a movie you'd laugh <laughs> all the time all the time yeah. any bad thing you see like yesterday we saw a big woman uh, breaking a pizza box in half with her arm to get it shoved into the trash can. In real life? In real life. That's great. We were at, she spent so much time. We were at a coffee shop, and the stupid variety coffee in our neighborhood is always full. It's just loiterers in there, all right? We've never, there's never been an open seat in that damn place. So we always end up sitting on the bench outside in the street. So we were sitting there sipping our coffee, and we just saw this woman come out of the back seat of her own car. There's no one in the driver's seat, and she just has a full pizza box, and it doesn't fit because it's got a circle thing. So she just puts it in and goes, yeah, she's doing karate chops to it <laughs> to get it folded in half, and it takes her a while. And she's making all the facial expressions, and she finally gets this thing punched into the hole. And then she goes back, opens the back door, and just sits back in to a driver. No one's driving this car. No one's in the front seat. I think she ate that entire pizza by herself, too. Of course she did. Yeah. Of course she did. And she's like, I don't want this evidence around. My kid's about to come out of tutoring. You know, so she's going to go hide the evidence. <laughs> And karate chop it into a trash can. I'm not gonna go pick up my cat from daycare. It's <laughs> probably more what she was saying. That fits. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, like, if you saw that in a movie, I think the first thought is, yes, it's funny, but also that's unbelievable. No one would do that. But then we saw it in real life. Mm -hmm. yeah. I spent a lot of time in that airport too. I used to be a contractor at that airport. A at, contract? Like contractor. A I was a pre my old life. I was uh, I worked in like building designing and like objects and stuff like that yeah and there's still uh there's still a bunch of design cases in there that they have in the airport right by the train that you did yeah they're wow. still there you've lived such an interesting life i've had a lot of jobs you yeah. had a old are you 22 20 <laughs> yeah pretty wild <laughs> Yeah, Rody from Metallica was always 40, the one that caught. 40, yeah. You're 40, yeah, yeah. So you're just a couple of years older than me. Yeah. But you've had you've had so many jobs. I've had a lot of jobs. Yeah. That's good. You're I'm, well. You're a well-rounded individual. I'm not great at anything, but I'm good at a lot of stuff. Yeah. Master of none. Master of none. Yes. <laughs> Jack of all. I think that's a lot of what today is. Everyone knows like 10 percent of something. Like it's we live in right. we live in a time of pseudo intelligence, where someone will like say like something about one subject for like 10 seconds and you're like whoa that person's really good but it's like listening to someone play the uh, like 10 seconds of a song and you're like whoa you're really good at guitar what's the next riff and then they're like oh i can't i don't know that <laughs> that's kind of where everyone is with intelligence everyone knows like 10 percent of about everything and then if you ask them what's on that next page you're like oh i got nothing i got nothing. feels a little weird that you came up with that after me saying i've had a lot of jobs <laughs> oh, but that i don't want to take personal offense to that but i kind of do <laughs> no First of all, I don't even know 10% about the little things. Like, how many times am I messing with my iPhone where you you get frustrated and you just take it out of my hand and then you do the thing I'm trying to do and you're like, good, our movie tickets are now purchased. And then you <laughs> hand it back to me. 
Because I'm completely... Like, how frustrating is it for you, someone that knows how to use modern technology well? Mm -hmm. Like, you made fun of me typing yesterday. Oh, yeah, you're a two-finger typer. What does that mean? <laughs> yeah, but I got all my fingers out. Yeah. So, like, I don't do this, but I get them all out to fool everybody, and then I'm still doing the <laughs> toot-toot-toot. So why did you just question her? You know what she said. Yeah, but... What do you mean? <laughs> you oh, mean? You, you know that I'm faking it? <laughs> I'm faking it like I did alto sax and middle school band. There's a lot of comedians in New York that think that I play piano because I fake it really well. <laughs> Do you really? So I, there used to be a show that there'd be a piano player and a heckler like messing with the comedian. That was like the show. Okay. Like, when the creek in the cave was here. And I used to play the piano for that because you'd also get to make fun of people. Yeah. So I learned how to like make it seem like I knew how to play piano so I could do that show more. <laughs> and then people thought I knew how to play piano, but I just figured out how to make people believe I knew how to play piano. Were you like playing something in the background? Nope. Or? Oh yeah, I was playing, but it was just, if you just play the black keys, it sounds like you know what you're doing. Is that true? Absolutely. Oh my God. It's wild. Next time we're at a mall with a piano, I'm taking a seat. And just start tickling the black keys. Black keys. Yeah. yeah. Is that why the band is I called the so. black keys? Probably because they're not good at music. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> they I sound really good at music, but yeah, maybe yeah. they're like, we're just hitting the one string. They're all like just... minor chords, so I, I believe which I think I also just made up, but it sounds right. But it does sound You just start right. just slowly playing, like, you can mix and match them, like, it doesn't matter, and it just seems like you're, like, really good at, like, ominous tone. Yeah, you played piano at Jason and Layla's. Yeah. Because I mean, they had a piano, and you were playing some haunting tune, like, we were about to be killed by the Mask of Zorro. <laughs> Requiem for a Dream, but it's the only song I know how to play. Yeah, you were playing it all doom and gloom. It was, it was putting a chill down our spines, but it was beautiful. But was it all the black keys? No. Oh. If you know like three chords on a piano, you can trick anybody. Same with guitar. Same with guitar. Yeah. Yeah. It's all power chords. It's all power chords. I know the power chords, and you're like, oh, can you play? And you're like, mm -hmm, no. <laughs> no. I can play the beginning of Stairway to Heaven, but don't let me get past that chorus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, uh, the hell were we just talking about? Best Buy. Best Buy. Orlando. <laughs> I do enjoy Florida. People, getting... people jumping off of the. Oh yeah, I was bridge. talking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not so sorry for anyone. Like sometimes I, I read, I read the comments under the podcast, and sometimes people get upset about certain things. You should know that I forget what I've said on this podcast as soon as it's, as soon as it's over, and you have to remind me sometimes. Kind of like with the veterinarians, I got upset mm -hmm. at my joke from 2016 or 2015, that old video. It's like, you got to tell me, the you have to remind me why you're upset at me and remind me what I said to make you upset. And then I'm not going to apologize because I they do have a rule that I'm not going to apologize for jokes. But I am going to go, da, that sucks. <laughs> That's going to be my response in case anyone gets upset. Oh, one person I wrote, you know, comedy is like a box of chocolates. Some are good, some are horrible, and uh, some are marzipan. Like, <laughs> and so you know, like you got a marzipan or a horrible one. I don't know, but some of these are some of these chocolates are good, but some of them are gonna be. It's the old Gaffigan joke. Oh, this one's filled with toothpaste. <laughs> like, <laughs> like <laughs> that one's. Every once in a while, it's gonna be one of those. There will be no apologies. None of this is meant to be taken seriously. Yeah, you can't apologize for something you don't remember saying, right? Absolutely. <laughs> if I don't remember it, it never happened. Or the we just put out the Houthi joke that I've been doing, and uh, a lot of people enjoyed it, and then other people are like, well, actually, the Houthis are attacking the cargo ships because of the injustice in Gaza, and, the, and then the United States is fighting that. I'm like, yeah, probably, but that's not funny. <laughs> like, don't forget, I just said, Houthi sounds weird. <laughs> <laughs> There was nothing, nothing behind that guy. Are you really coming after me? Yeah, dude. <laughs> Don't protest a, a senator, you dumbass. Sorry, apologize for my language. No, you're good. But that's true. Like, I, I like when people come in with facts and then, because I've been doing that joke for like three, three weeks now at least, and it's been murdering in front of every audience, just crushing hard. And after the show, no one's upset. But you put it online and people aren't experiencing it at a comedy club on their Friday night out with the two drink minimum, having the time of their lives. They're experiencing it at the bus stop. And they're like, well, actually, ah, and they just got done reading an article about the travesties of the war. And then they see my dumb ass going, these. 
And then now you're bringing article information energy into my ha ha comedy think joke. They think they are. <laughs> How dare you? They're attacking cargo ships. Okay. I'm surprised nobody's like gotten offended at crowd work online. Like, what is this guy's hat? And you're some guy's watching on his phone wearing a hat. Like, but I got a hat. <laughs> People are so dumb. Man, there's a, someone was telling me one of those crowd work guys had a meltdown in Chicago. I forget the name of the guy, but one of the crowd work guys that has like a billion views has had some sort of meltdown in Chicago. And uh, I, even if you find their name, I don't want to, you know, because maybe it was like a mental thing. I don't know what it was, but it was fun to hear. Because I've watched this certain person's crowd work, and it's pretty mean. It's a lot of, oh, yeah, you call that a face? And then he makes fun of some guy's face. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. It's not nice. It's not nice. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's good. You have a meltdown, and then it levels you out a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know? Can't find him. Can't find him. That's Don't fine. know who it is? I'll, I'll tell you off camera. You do know. I do know the name. I was uh, playing dumb. I was playing dumb, and I made you do a Google. I felt bad as you were Googling some. You playing Houthi? Yeah, the Houthis. <laughs> Houthi, think you are. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a great line. I like that. But yeah, people get uh, people get upset about all sorts of stuff. The I posted the alpha male clip with the, but I did it in stand. I did it on the podcast, but I did it on stage, and it started working. So I, I, I put that up there and then, you know, you get, you get the alpha males that are upset and then you get everyone else going, that's pretty funny. I, I, I see what you were doing there. Mm -hmm. I love, the, I love the idea of alpha male. Yeah. Or someone that's like, I'm an alpha male. Yeah. I don't think that anyone who's an alpha male is like, I'm an alpha male. No. <laughs> Isn't that like the most beta thing you can do is be like, I'm bigger, better. Like, yeah. <laughs> mm, mm. It's like a guy calling. Why are you telling me <laughs> instead of showing me? Exactly. Uh -huh. Shouldn't you be eating a tree? <laughs> like, you know, like doing alpha male stuff, swinging a, uh, an axe at a pole. Like, I'm going to cut down this metal pole with an axe. You're like, wow, I didn't even know axes could do that. You work at Google, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> You're not an alpha male. You're definitely not an alpha. And. And uh, it's telling someone you're an alpha is like telling someone you're cool. You're probably not. That's like the mom going, I'm cool, right, guys? And you're like, no. No, you're not. All the all the faux alpha people are like the guys in the Salt Life shirts who are probably smoked a little too much, drank a little too much, and they think they're ready to fight until the fight happens, and then they're like, oh, no, this is a bad idea. I th in my imagination, I, I win all of these situations. I love seeing I love seeing bully takedowns. Yeah. Those are my favorite videos to watch. I it's love like seeing that. Some guy trying to start a fight and then loses that fight. I'm like, oh, man, this is <laughs> heaven. Pure heaven. So, sometimes I like to see straight bullying without... <laughs> Full stop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, full st just regular bullying. Like, uh, there was a new, because there's like a bunch of violence on the subway. And there, I don't know if you've seen this. I told you about it. But there's a guy playing the cello at like the Grand Central Station, some subway station. And this woman came up behind and just hit him in the back of the head with a bottle and then walked off. And, and so he's just over there playing the cello, being all cool. And then, blah. And he's like, ah. And then she just leaves. And I'm like, I like that kind of bullying. That kind of right, like he's fine, you know, he's gonna be all right. That's not gonna like. What about her? Is she okay? I don't know. How I, many bottles do you have to get hit with before you start hitting other people? Like this lady's getting pounded, like something. Her whole life is just getting smashed in the head with a bottle, and she finally had enough. Maybe I she see one more stringed instrument. <laughs> Maybe she was beaten at Catholic school while they were playing classical music on the radio, and then she walked by and she's like, nah. looking around her purse. Sister while I Mary, <laughs> and then just whack with a bottle and the guy with the cello. He's fine, by the way. You have such a shocked look on your face that I said that I liked you that he got hit in it. Dark. Is it dark? <laughs> Listen, I hope he's okay, and I hope they capture that woman and they say, "Hey, you can't do that," you know. But also, what's the uh, how much prison time is that? I mean, that's assault. Yeah, what is that? Six months, a year? Uh, no, probably less, depending on her couple history. Weeks. How many tickets does she have? You know? Oh yeah, yeah. I bet you she's because that's not deadly weapon. You know, that's probably like assault with intent to harm rather than assault 
with the intent to kill. Yeah. I'm making things up. Um, I, I think how you, do you know all this? I don't, I don't know anything. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like you threw a lot of people around. It sounds like you're talking from experience. I watched Suits. <laughs> <laughs> I went to traffic court online a couple weeks ago, <laughs> so I'm pretty much a lawyer at this point. I assaulted the keyboard and I had to take the test over again. Yeah, I mean, what she did was absolutely wrong, but like, it was, it was, I felt like it was okay, you know? <laughs> You ever feel that way? Like someone's like playing. Imagine the arrogance that it takes to play the cello in the subway. <laughs> like, that's and not a carry good that thing down. Yeah. You're in the subway getting to that stop. Just like, sorry, pardon me. Excuse and, me. Pardon me. You know what else got me about that? He had two angles of the incident because oh, he set up two cameras to film himself playing cello in the subway. It's almost like good for you, dude. Like post that video. Yes. <laughs> Do I remember Ariel Elias got hit with, hit a, with a beer? With a beer. Yeah. It's, my first thought, I was like, I didn't think. I hope she's fine. I didn't think, oh, suck. I was like immediately like, good for you, Ariel. Yeah. <laughs> and here comes she, a career. <laughs> and then she turned that and into a late crushing. night. Yeah, yeah late crushing. night set. Do you remember this? There was a comic. She got hit with a beer. And I don't remember what she said because I watched it on mute. But I just remember she picked up the beer and drank out of the beer that she just got hit with. And I'm like, that's badass. Well, she never got hit. But somebody threw it with the intention to hit. Mm. Oh, okay. They threw and it at she, her. Then she chugged it. Yeah, yeah and then yeah. she chugged it. Someone was but, mad that she... They asked her who she voted for, and she didn't answer it, and she then the person assumed that meant Biden, and so wow. it was despicable. That's weird. Yeah. That's a weird question to yell at a comedy show. Who'd you vote for? And you're like, whoa. Mm. I hope that doesn't get asked in Florida, because I don't think that's going to go south for the Z-Man. Yeah, really. <laughs> I'm going to get I'm gonna get hit with some dentures. Uh, DeSantos. <laughs> <laughs> DeSantos. <laughs> yeah, I tell him I voted for a guy that's not available yeah, exactly. in the state I live in. I voted for Santos in his water boots. Or DeSantis. That's his name. I love that the, his nickname is Ronda Santos <laughs> because of his heels. <laughs> Ronda Santos. Did Trump make that up? I think the internet made that oh, up. Oh, the internet made it up? Trump's funny, but I don't think he's clever enough for that. <laughs> he, dude, like, I know everyone's talked about the nicknames he makes for people, but they're good. Have like, you seen his new shoes? Yeah, he has new, uh, did you see this? Mm -hmm. Trump has, like, gold sneakers. And they're he's selling them. What? He announced them at Sneaker Con. Yeah. Oh. Which is very God. funny. Which is like it's I, it's a little coincidental that he also has like eight hundred million dollars in court fines. And, yeah. Yeah. and he's yeah. like, I gotta sell <laughs> shoes, dude. How much are the shoes? Well, we only made a hundred pair and they're all three hundred and fifty. There are three point five million dollars a piece. <laughs> he's like, if he, Kanye can do it, I can do it too. <laughs> that's crazy. Like if you think about it, this guy's running for president just to pay his legal fees. He's like, I gotta run for president and hope I get the job. So then maybe I can like raise enough money in my war chest because you get to keep that money, right? When a politician, no. you don't. What no. happens to the money if you don't use it all for your campaign? I think it has to stay in certain accounts. I mean, that's why there's election like finance fraud. It happens okay. a lot. Uh, I well, mean, I they mean, can get was... away with it. They can get around it, but I, they, it has to be used in certain ways. It has to be in certain type of accounts. Oh, interesting. I also could be making this up. <laughs> These are things that I've heard. That, that sounds true, clear, but though. if there was ever someone to go, yeah, maybe I won't do that, it might be Trump. <laughs> it, might be, it might be someone who skirts some dollars and goes, hey, man, I got to pay $480 million to the state of New York. I think it's what that's why when they all say, I'm suspending my campaign, they don't say I'm ending my campaign, because if you suspend it, you can still spend out of that account and like still collect money because uh, you haven't officially ended the campaign. So no politician ever says I ended my campaign. They always say I'm suspend suspending it, it because it's till further note, you know, so that way they can just keep robbing people. I see. America. America. <laughs> <laughs> I would, I don't know, especially this day and age. You can't, you got to be the loud one. It's like that with everything though. Like I can't watch sports the morning shows on sports, everyone's just yelling about stuff that doesn't matter. Like, they need to fire this guy. Like, why are you yelling about it? It's because I need to. You got to keep attention. It's the same with that and then politics. The only people that are calm are these meathead podcasters that are just talking in low tones. Me like you want, you know? <laughs> They're the only ones that are calm. You know what the problem is with the Houthis? 
That's it. Never That's know. it. <laughs> they don't have anything to say after that. They don't know. They're hoping somebody else jumps in. <laughs> and then they can go, yeah. I would love to be on one of those meathead low tone podcasts and then just be like, Houthis. Like, just like <laughs> speak in a way that doesn't make any sense with the tone in which. I'm dying to get on. Uh, what's that red eye guy? G- uh, Gutfeld. Gutfeld. I'm, yeah. I'm dying to get on that show. Yeah. I'm angling hard to be a guest. Are you really? Because it's the dumbest show I've ever it seen. And it's the highest rated late night talk show in america well that's the age group that still watches late night talk shows. yeah yeah and, but it's everyone just gets away with the most ridiculous stuff like no one's getting called out on that show and i would love to go and be like wait can you explain that real quick <laughs> that's all i would do i would just qu- wait what and then, then watch his full meltdowns watch their heads explode <laughs> yeah but that's if they let you off with the question because it's isn't it a panel yeah everyone yeah, gets you- one shot though and then they come back around to you a second I time see. To do your little bits. I see. Because yeah. to me, it kind of looks like the same layout of like an Andrew Schultz show, where like if you're a guest and then he has his friends on this side and then he's on that side, it's kind of their show and you just kind of you're kind of there, you know. It's like an uh, it's like an unwatchable um, Colin Quinn. Uh, what was that show? Tough crowd. Tough crowd. Yeah. It's a easy crowd. Easy crowd. <laughs> easy layup with Greg Gutfeld. <laughs> easy layup with. I wouldn't. Yeah, I wouldn't know what to say with any of that. I, I also it would just I was talking with you about this like because I said it on stage in Florida where I was I have this bit about it, it's hard to make friends and then before that I had a bit about we were thinking of having kids or not having kids or freezing eggs or whatever and uh someone in the front row said yeah well when you have kids you'll make friends because you end up making friends with the other parents and I'm like, I don't know if I want that because then I got to have those parent conference, like parent conversations where like, I don't want to talk to some guy I vaguely know about transgender athletes participating in like girl sports, you know, because they're not going to like my take on it, you know, like, cause, and then I said this on stage and it worked in Jacksonville, Florida of all places. But I was like, yeah, if I had a daughter and she got beat by a transgender athlete, good. Like, what a way to learn that, like, life isn't fair. This is where you're supposed to learn that life isn't fair is in school. Yeah. Like, what is more unfair, being pinned by a transgender athlete or being 36, working 10 years to raise your credit score and putting together a down payment only to be outbid by a cash buyer from China? Like, that's not <laughs> fair. That's definitely not fair. It's also but- a great metaphor for the rest of her sporting career. It's like, hey, just so you know, men are better at sports. <laughs> No. It's, 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 there is no future, unfortunately, in fem- in women's sports. No. So get you. Let's get you into the theater. Let's teach you how to play piano. Also, sports has never been fair. No, I remember our high school when I played at San Marcos High School. We weren't very good. Wasn't a good name drop there, <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> uh, is that, does it sound bad? No, it's just funny. Or just. When I played at San Marcos High School, <laughs> like anyone's gonna know. Oh, well, like, we had a pretty good program. Yeah. No, we didn't. We had, uh, well, I mean, we had some good players. I was definitely not one of them. But like, we were considered one of the poor schools. Now it's a rich school. That's why I, I'm saying like back then it was like a poor school district. Now a bunch of they added all these high end houses up on the hill. So now it's like I think the program has a lot of money. But back then we would go play these rich schools that would show up in like tour buses like like those ones that like chinese tourists go to see the grand canyon they would show up in nice tour buses we would show up in like a beat up school bus you know and uh, they would just ransack us these kids were so in shape they had nice gyms nice facilities some of them were probably on steroids some of them were probably recruited to go play and then we're over here just malnourished we haven't eaten since noon and this game is a a damn seven o'clock yeah we're getting ransacked we're hungry and we're and we're poor and we're getting beat up. Sports aren't fair. They were never fair. Never happened. Never people be. cheat. Uh, steroid. I don't know. How else do people cheat? People steal calls. Like coaches get in trouble all the time for videotaping practices. It's I, we we want sports to be fair. I get it. I want sports to be because it's the only part of life that's kind of fair. Because there's a scoreboard. Everything else is kind of abstract. Like. What is success? What is this? But the sports- coach has a kid that also plays your position, and even oh. though they're not better than you, you get kicked out because your parents couldn't pay enough money to support the boosters, and the coach's kid plays your position first base. You never get to play high school football, and then your dreams are dashed for the rest of your life, and you have to force yourself into theater and track. This feels personal, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for it to end. Now you produce podcasts? Like- <laughs> oh, it's weirding it up. <laughs> So that, did you have that experience growing word up? Word for word. Wow, <laughs> man. That's hard. 
they gathered all the parents and they were like, well, you need to boost, be boosters. And my dad's like, one, no, two, couldn't. So I guess you're going to have to choose a new sport, Mike. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. I guess it was good for me because I was never good at any of the sports. So there was never an opportunity for them to be unfair to me, you know, which is, I feel like if we have a kid, you have like athletic genes in you. You played high school basketball, even though you scored in the wrong hoop once, which I love that story. <laughs> uh, but I think my half, my clumsy half of genetics will mesh with your coordinated half of genetics. And I don't, it's going to be a real crapshoot which way we go, mm -hmm. you know? Like, you watched me fall on the ground hard because I was trying to take my pants off the other night. <laughs> oh, I just remembered. <laughs> that really answers her question of should we have kids so or not. Good. Don't ask her in that moment. Be like, It was the hardest fall I've ever seen in my life. I just watched it. I went, he put his arms out to block fell, just. Like, yeah, I didn't have time. He my tripped over his pants and he fell sideways <laughs> on his hip. <laughs> like, and it went. <laughs> it was a big boom. It was a big, but my, I was taking my pants off and my foot got caught in the knee part. Sure. And then I was like, damn it. And I gave it a jerk. And it was one of those jerks where I knew I was jerking my leg to the point where if my leg doesn't come free, I'm too tipped over to the right. Like we're taking a gamble here. And, but it's the fourth quarter. We're trying to get in the bed, you know? So I, <laughs> I jerk it. And then I just, I fell hard. Like someone shoved me from above. Like one of those like linemen wow. was above me and like they shoved me down. I fell hard. And it was great. Cause you just. The bed was between us, and you just disappear. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the best falls. Like when you fell, because you got your foot caught in the comforter, and you were going to go pee, and then I, you're like, ah, and then I look, and you just disappeared <laughs> off the edge of the bed. <laughs> yeah, it's so, it's so fun to watch people get hurt. I love watching people fall. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the only thing that brings me... I know this episode's been dark, but like... I don't want anyone to get hurt, but fallen. Like, w remember the one we watched today? The guy fell on his front porch, mm -hmm. and then he slid down the stairs. <laughs> so, like, he fell flat, and then he's just like, Slowly. it was almost like there were no bones left in his body. His body formed the stairs <laughs> as he went down. <laughs> and oh, he's just that. saying, damn it. <laughs> oh. yeah, at a certain point after a fall, you just lean into it, and you're like, well, when this ends, it ends. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be good for one fall a winter. Oh, every man. winter I take one spill down the stairs, but lately I'm like, the I don't have any stairs. No, my own stairs. Oh, okay, like coming out of my apartment, like down the stoop. But I, uh, I don't have many left <laughs> where these knees are going to hold them. So yeah. I'm like, I become very careful. Man, I walk sideways down the stairs, holding on to three things. I'm like a 90 year old man trying to make his way to the bus. It's dude. coming down the stairs. I'm, I'm scared of falling because I'm like, I'm going to break my hand, hurt my shoulder, trying to catch myself. You know, because it's all ice everywhere. Every uh, whatever this last snowstorm was, it's been melting, but it's still freezing. So when it melts, it just turns it into ice. And now you got these ice sheets, and I'm over at hopscotch and trying to get into the uh, the subway. And it's, it's just a matter of time. Mm -hmm. It's a matter of time before this goes down. Um, this is what I want. I just remembered what I was trying to say about Jacksonville like 20 minutes ago. Sure. <laughs> Speaking of the Orlando airport, <laughs> we sidetracked into suicide way hard. I. Uh, the, this have you ever played the comedy zone in Jacksonville? Yes, very very long time ago. The inside the Ramada. Oh yeah yeah yeah. I just did that oh, for the good. first time, and I was like, blown. I loved. I don't know how you felt about the stage and the room. I loved it. Yeah, it's fine. It was fun. Yeah, it's probably one of their their top three clubs. Yeah, I for, would the say, for the comedy zone. Comedy zone. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, uh, North uh, Charlotte's supposed to be their best one. I've heard. That's their home base. Yeah. Yeah, but this Jacksonville one, it's inside a Ramada. And it's a Ramada, so it's not nice. Like, it's a... Uh, Ramadas haven't been nice since 1985, I think. Oh. No. Yeah. Like, that's when they were good. I th Did you stay at the Ramada? I don't remember. Oh, okay. I was on a run, so I don't know. I also did Fort Walton Beach for the zone that week, and that is not one of their good rooms. Well, they There's a mechanical sat bull <laughs> in the room with you, and sometimes people are on it. <laughs> so... Not the ideal situation for comedy. I, they they used to do one at um, a Howl at the Moon. Yeah, the piano the bar. The piano bar, but yeah. they do it right after the piano bar's over. So it's like a Friday night, and they're just like, shout to the Howl! And then everyone's like, ah, I'm playing Steam. And they're like, all right, thank you for coming out. Time for comedy. And you're like, how's everyone doing? Like, it's so bad. 
It's so bad. I did that with Rich Voss one year, and it was one of the most brutal nights of my life. Oh, you got to work with Voss. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, I love Voss. Voss I got to work with him in Vegas. He's the best. I love him. He's a really nice guy. And he comes off East Coast gruff, but he's actually a real tender sweetheart. Sweet man. Yeah. I, uh, you and I went to a howl at the moon. Remember when we were downtown San Diego and we were hungry mm-hmm. and we didn't know, and we just, they had a sandwich board that said we have tacos and they were only, they were the open lights. So we snuck into this piano bar and we just sat down and we were, and they finally served us our tacos, but now they were closing out their set. So they're like, for this last song, we need everybody to stand up, stand up. And we're like, damn it. We just, do you remember this? No. We just wanted to eat. We're just there. And we like, all we want to do is eat. And then they like did the thing and they made us stand up and. No recollection. Wow. All right. But Hot choice it. to go to a piano bar to eat, though. Well, it was We were in a situation, and then they made a stand, so our, our tacos are, like, at waist level. And then, because they put the flashlights on us, and they're like, you two, don't be stinkers. And everyone's like, come on, you guys. And we're like, damn it, all we want to do is eat tacos. And they wouldn't let us eat our damn tacos. I really blocked that out of my memory. I think it was, I think you blocked a lot of our early dating out of your memory. <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Well, because that was still the time I was trying to win you over. I don't know if you know this. Great move. Great move. <laughs> After this, we're going to get dessert at the bowling alley. What else? What other great decisions? I don't know if it's your poor decision making that's more questionable or your decision making that's more questionable. <laughs> so for the first, what, four months? Let's go, get, of- let's go get lunch at Waffle House. Well, it's kind of a breakfast spot, but okay. <laughs> It was a lot of, it was a lot of faux pas. I would say on my part, I've I don't know how I come off on stage or on camera, but I'm not like a uh, suave guy. Don't I wouldn't worry about no it. one. What I don't want doing? anyone to get the wrong idea that I'm some sort of like suave swooner. You know, like the coolest thing that ever happened is when you and I met in San Jose. We went to a, we were going out to grab a drink, and there was some guy that recognized me. And was like, whoa, are you that guy? You're Zoltan. You do comedy. And I went. And I did that, and I played that off. Cool. And then you were like, oh, my God, who's this? You know, you're like, oh, ho, ho, ho. And I was like, oh. And then it never happened again. <laughs> it never happened again. Oh, man, that is so true. I think so you true. could rank yourself in the smooth, suave. Frank Sinatra's favorite line was, who me? <laughs> Isn't this a funny word? <laughs> anyway, let me croon for you for another hour. <laughs> croon. But yeah, I feel like you didn't like me for like the first three months. It's not that I didn't like you. You just, <laughs> it's just I didn't know. You didn't know if you liked me. Yes. Yeah. Like I was all in on this girl, Emma, my <laughs> wife. And there was a solid three months where she's like yeah i guess and i was like i was like are you sure we can get fish tacos at the piano bar and you're like, i guess i don't know that's so good yeah we had fun i visited you out in uh florida and you took me to the cat cafe uh-huh. remember that time i was supposed to do a live over there and then i got all self-conscious and i was just like walking around like this you know how you're supposed to be outgoing like i am on the podcast but it was just like me and a couple cat people just staring at me and i'm like i'm here at the cat cafe and i was just so uncomfortable it was a big deal because before you arrived everyone was like oh zoltan's coming he's gonna do a live but they were cleaning and they were like getting everything <laughs> ready cleaning. for you was this one live was new um, no no. So, this was like what, 20... 2019? 20, yeah, 19. 2019, no. Sometimes you forget how big you are in the cat world, man. Yeah, dude. Yeah. And I went over there, and then just with everyone watching me, I felt all self-conscious, and I couldn't open up and be myself. <laughs> you ever do that? Like, I, I can never do those videos that people do where they walk down the street and like, let me tell you something about this and that. And you're like, I can't do... I, I can't even take a selfie... Anytime I, I've taken selfies to send to Emma when I'm traveling, and they are the most uncomfortable looking photos. It looks like I got a snapshot taken in security footage <laughs> where it's just, you know, it's like a quick, and then I'll send her something. She's texting your family, like, is he arrested? Because <laughs> he just sent me a mugshot. It looks like someone has a gun to him on the other side of this camera. Uh, yeah. Say something funny. <laughs> I got nothing. Hootie. Yeah. Hootie. <laughs> It's a, uh, yeah, it's a disaster. I'm not very, I'm not very confident in all those things. I think you're pretty smooth. Am I smooth? Yeah, you're good. You saw me trip a lot. 
Yeah, in the early days, you were very clumsy. Man, I once went on a date, I remember in high school, and we were in my 81 Buick Regal, and she sat in the car, and then I didn't open my, it was a big long door, the 81 Buick Regal, and there's a car park too close next to me, so I couldn't open it all the way. And I very quickly tried to get in all cool, and my head hit the window. So imagine me whipping my head to get in. My head hit the window, bounced, and then I hit the other side of the car, like the roof. So my head did a boom, boom, and then I just quickly went in, and they made very loud noise, and they hurt like hell. And she's like, what? And I'm like, what? Like, we gotta, she's like, are you all right? I'm like, what? Nothing happened. What are you talking about? She's like, you're bleeding on two sides of your head. Like, I had a bruise. I had short hair at the time, and you could see a bruise on both sides. Like, like, don't, don't worry. The, the, the interior damage is way worse. <laughs> I've forgotten everything. I forgot who taught me to tie my shoes. You know. Speaking of being clumsy, you took the autism test. Oh, Yikes. And apparently, you're not autistic. I am not. I can I can I share what you? Yeah, you can share my results. So, no, no, not your results. <laughs> <laughs> you can share my results. Let everyone know. So I'm on stage at in Jacksonville, and in the middle of one of the shows, I look down at my to see how much time I have left. I look at my phone, and there's just a text from my wife that says. So I think I'm autistic. <laughs> that's the entire. That's the entire text. That's a new. That's a new contest show coming out on Fox. Yeah. So, so you think you're autistic? <laughs> it's just a, a panel of people not making eye contact with the camera, just looking <laughs> elsewhere. <laughs> One guy's facing the other way, like I can't. Uh, so she sends me that, and I re I I tell the audience that i'm like oh i just got a text from my wife and it just says i th so i think i'm autistic <laughs> and everyone laughs and then i opened because you sent me like a bunch of texts and i opened them i was like oh she took a test online mm -hmm. and so you took it's called the rads mm -hmm. test mm -hmm. and uh what <clears throat> there were all these scores you scored 80 mm -hmm. And 60 is like you got you might have some of it a hundreds like you got it and so she was in between. You might have it, it and you got it. Like two fifty or something. I can't yes. remember. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It goes up to two two fifty. Is like we don't even know how you took the test. Uh, but like, uh, but yeah, you scored eighty, and I honestly like I've been going back and forth with you on that. I don't think you are. You know why? And I've told you this. You you always say you think I'm autistic. What you it's just when like. <laughs> what are you talking about? Sometimes, sometimes I'll t I'll give you like a a simile, or I'll, <laughs> I'll I'll tell you a joke, and you focus on the details instead of the bigger picture of it. I'm very literal. Yeah. Yes, you're very literal. Like what was the there was like that kids book when I was a kid where there was like a a maid, but she was very literal, and like she would do things wrong like uh, i'm trying to think of a, an example like beat the rugs but instead of hanging them up and beating them with a stick she would just like pound the hell out of these rugs because she didn't know it was like miss mary mac takes things amelia bedelia um, is that the name Maybe. amelia bedelia she takes things a little literally yeah like if you're not very specific theories about a housekeeper who takes her instructions literally yes yeah yeah so a little bit like amelia bedelia where you just look at the, like, the... But here's my argument to why you're not. You're really good at reading people's faces and telling if, like, they're having a bad day, a slow day. Like, you can tell their emotions just by looking at them. And people high on the spectrum, I don't think they pick up on those types of cues. I mean, that's why it's called a spectrum. Right. Right? Like, so maybe I have some of those things and I don't have others. Sure. But... But then uh, you're like, you take the test because I'm. you thought I was going to score, like, 3,000 on this thing. <laughs> And I'm like, it's just because I don't like being in public and I get uncomfortable when I meet people, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, I dread that. I dread that. That's why I'm comfortable on stage. My therapist told me this when I used to go to therapy. She's like, yeah, you you don't like one-on-one -on -one interactions because you don't know what the other person's going to say. And when you're on stage, I get to do all the talking. And they just kind of have to. It's a, it's a controlled, I'm in control of the situation. But if you're just like sitting there and it's a 50 50 conversation, I hate that because then I'm like, I don't know what you're going to say. I don't know how I'm going to react. And I don't what if I don't know what to respond with? Like these are all 
these are all thoughts that I have. So every encounter that I get into, half of my brain is engaged. The other half is like, how do we get out of this? <laughs> how, what can I say? Whoa, look at the time. I got to catch the two o'clock to the, I don't know, whatever. I got to get the hell out of here. I got to so. go to a bar to meet up with the garbage bag. <laughs> they told me to take out the trash. So we're going to go have a drink. I want to do this where you just look right into someone's eyes without blinking and just go, I have to leave now. And just and see how they take that, you know? I have somewhere to be. I have somewhere Real low. To be. Oh. oh, my God. Okay. But yeah, I took the test. I scored 30, and you were very upset about that because mm -hmm. you thought I was going to score like 30,000 or something. Yeah. Especially when I got to the, are you a clumsy person question? Oh, yeah, you're like, that's you. That's, like, so that's so funny. So you were sure. taking the test going, Zoltan would definitely answer hard yes on these. Yeah. And I was taking the test going, oh, yeah, I can see where Emma scored high <laughs> on some of these. <laughs> but, yeah, clumsy. I've been clumsy. I also don't know how. I've been clumsy my entire life. But I also don't know how accurate the test is because every answer is just four options, and it's the same options. I, they'd ask you a question like, "Are you? would you consider yourself a clumsy person who trips and falls a lot? Uh, yes, my entire life, only b b before I was 16, uh, more now and less before, and the other one was never. And those were the four questions for every prompt, and some of them didn't fit. Like, one of them said, are you comfortable in conversations with two or more people? And that's hard for me to answer because I'm comfortable if I'm on stage in front of 100 people and it's my turn to talk for the entire time. I'm very comfortable. But if I'm sitting at a table with two people, it depends how close I am to them. Also, when it's a self-guided a self -guided test, it's like what answer is going to get me not the score that puts me in right. that category? <laughs> like I would cheat on that test. <laughs> I would just be like, which one do they want me to say? Got it. Like, I would never answer. I don't think I could have the capacity to answer it honestly. I don't think I could. Because I know what the result, I know it's like, it's pass fail. You know, it's like, I got to pass, man. I once, I remember in LA, uh, when I lived there, I was trying to get a job at a grocery store and they were hiring and I, f they called me and I thought they were going to give me the job or schedule an interview. And they go, you failed the personality survey at the end, which hurt my feelings so bad because I tried to answer those questions the way I thought they would have wanted it. And they're like, you didn't pass. And the part that really hurt the, or confused me, I guess, the most is the next time I went to that grocery store. Uh, there was like a mentally disabled kid bagging my groceries. And I'm like, that guy passed the personality survey? Like that hurt, my, like I was like, what? do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, but they also, that person probably had a great personality. He, I'm sure he had a great <laughs> yeah. personality. Guy, Let's take it away from him. Yeah, no, I'm not, I'm, I'm proud of him. He got the job. I'm just saying it, it made me feel worse because I'm like, not only am I not good enough for this job, but I also have a bad personality. Like Jim is apparently in the break room making friends with everybody. And I would have been, they, assuming my test, they would have thought I was standing in the corner just staring at the wall, muttering nonsense about the devil. You know, like the I, way I answered my personality survey, mm -hmm. apparently. I think that's some sort of deficiency because I also like when the, I answer the questions at the doctor, what I think he wants to hear too. Do you? Yeah. Like, do you ever smoke? Never in my life. <laughs> Never in my life. Do you do drugs? Ew. <laughs> like, I, I shouldn't be, I should answer the questions. That should be the only place I say the, the truth. <laughs> I think it's a comedian thing. It might be. <laughs> if we don't want to tell the truth. People pleasing, maybe. A yeah, it's a, it's a hint of people pleasing. But then they, I remember they're like, you can redo the personality survey. And I'm like, I'm not failing this twice. So no. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I can't. If you don't like me at my worst, you don't get me at my best. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good old personality survey. How are we doing on time? We're just uh, at an hour, bud. At an hour? Hour well, good. two. Well, good, because I had more notes, but we're recording two episodes today. So I think that's the episode for this week. I hope it wasn't too dark. I hope you enjoyed yourself. Uh, don't forget to get yourself a safe journal, safejournal.co, 25% off, Zoltan at checkout, and I write you a note. Uh, other than that, go check out my tour dates, zoltancomedy.com. Sayonara, everybody. Trekking heavier, traveling light. There's one thing that's right wherever I go. That's where I am.